We have a Florida family who are really pioneers in a brave new world. They have volunteered to be the first ever to have microchip identification devices implanted into their body. After 9-11, I was really concerned um, with the security of my family. I wouldn't mind having something planted permanently in my arm that would identify me. George Orwell, in his famed and possibly prophetic work, 1984, stated, Power is not a means, it is an end. The object of persecution is persecution. The object of torture is torture. The object of power is power. Today, symptoms of a surveillance society continue to grow as irrational fears of invisible enemies, coupled with rising economic instability, spread across the globe. It is under this guise of security that we can foreshadow a world where everyone is tracked, everyone is on camera, and everyone is subordinated. The most incredible aspect of all. Such totalitarianism would likely not be forced upon the people. Rather, the people will demand it. For the social manipulation of society through the generation of fear and division has completely inhibited the culture. Religion, patriotism, race, wealth, class, and every other form of arbitrary, separatist identification and thus conceit has served to create a controlled population, utterly malleable in the hands of the few. Divide and conquer is the motto, and as long as people continue to see themselves as separate from everything else, they lend themselves to being completely enslaved. However, if the people ever realize the truth of their relationship to nature, and the truth of their personal power to effect change, the entire manufactured zeitgeist that's preyed upon would collapse like a house of cards. The whole system that we live in drills into us that we're powerless, that we're weak, that our society is evil, that it's private, and etc. and so forth. It's all a big fat lie. We are powerful, beautiful, extraordinary. There is no reason why we cannot understand who we truly are, where we are going. There is no reason why the average individual cannot be fully empowered. We are incredibly powerful beings. You know, I think I spent 30 years of my life, in the first 30, trying to become something. I wanted to become good at things. I wanted to become good at tennis. I wanted to become good at school and grades and, and everything I kind of viewed in that perspective. I'm not okay the way I am, but if I got good at things, you realize that I had the game wrong. The game was to find out what I already was. Find out what I already was. we've been trained for individual differences to stand out. So you look at each person, the immediate hit is brighter, dumber, older, younger, richer, poorer, and we make all these dimensional dis distinctions, put them in categories and treat them that way. And we get so that we only see others as separate from ourselves in the ways in which they're separate. And one of the dramatic characteristics of experience is being with another person and suddenly seeing the ways in which they are like you, not different from you. And experiencing the fact that, that which is essence in you and which is essence in me is indeed one. The understanding that there is no other. It is all one. And I wasn't born Richard Albert, I was just born as a human being. And then I learned this whole business of who I am and whether I'm good or bad or achieving or not, all that's learned along the way. The old appeals to racial, sexual, and religious chauvinism, to rabid nationalist fervor, are beginning not to work. A new consciousness is developing which sees the earth as a single organism and 
recognizes that an organism at war with itself is doomed. shows with this. Life's like a ride in an amusement park. And when you go on it, you think it's real, because that's how powerful our minds are. And the ride goes up and down and round and round. It has thrills and chills, and it's very brightly colored. And it's very loud, but it's fun for a while. Some have been on the ride for a long time, and they begin to question, is this real, or is this just a ride? And other people have remembered, and they come back to us, and they say, Hey, don't worry, don't be afraid ever, because this is just a ride. And we kill those people. Shut him up, I've got a lot invested in this ride. Shut him up! Look at my furrows of worry. Look at my big bank account and my family. This has to be real. It's just a ride. But we'll, we'll kill those good guys who try and tell us that. You ever notice that? And let the demons run amok? But it doesn't matter, because it's just a ride, and we can change, change it in time we want. It's only a choice. No effort, no work, no job, no, no savings with money. money. Just a choice right now between fear and love.